Hello everyone and welcome to Guild Wars 2 Making Gold. Um, I'd like to start talking about market manipulation. It is my favorite thing to do within an online economy and I'm finally getting to the point where I can start doing it. I know some of you guys have already hit that. And I'd like to share the secret behind manipulating a market to your own profit. I had to cover a lot of the basics, a lot of the concepts behind um, playing with a trading post so you can get familiar with it before you delved into such a, a, a large topic. You can go to Reddit or Guild Wars 2 Guru and you can make a post about some specific item that is going to be the next big thing and some upcoming patch and watch it skyrocket before you cash out and make plenty of gold. But that game has short legs. Guild Wars 2 Guru has already banned speculation threads and people will wise up very quickly. What I'm talking about is real manipulation. You find a single item, you constrict the supply, and you watch both it and the items downstream from it go up in price, and you rake in the profits. This is part one of a several part series in which will help you identify and execute this trick. I've done it several times myself. The most successful time was back in World of Warcraft when I turned a half million investment into 750k in less than a week by holding the server supply of herbs when a new patch was released. Now, part one, this particular video, is just laying the foundation. Before we can manipulate it, we need to have a basic understanding of how a market works. And everyone probably understands supply and demand, I know, but we have to take a look at it anyway. This is your traditional supply and demand curve. At the low end, right here, bottom left hand corner, now you see our blue line of supply, okay? When you have a low price, which is our, our y axis here, when the price is low, there's very low, little supply. Nobody's out farming an item that sells for one copper. On the opposite end, on the upper right hand side, if there's a high price, that means there's going to be a high supply of that item. So this is looking at how much would you be willing to farm an item if that item is worth one copper versus two gold? Okay, that's just the supply side. The higher the, the, the price of the item, the more you're willing to farm it. On the opposite axis, going this direction, is the demand curve. How much you want the item, how much people go to go purchase it. At a high price, means there's very little demand. If, uh, or a calcum ore costs you two gold each, you're not going to be buying very many. It reduces demand. On the opposite end, lower right hand corner here, low price means high demand. If or a calcum ore is one copper each, you'd go out and buy your 250 that you need for your legendary and you'd go and buy however much you need to create craft whatever you want all the time, right? High demand. You'd use as much of it as you as you needed to. And this right here in the very center is where the two meet. Okay, so where the right amount of supply and the right amount of, amount of demand where they cross that's the price that it that it's set. So that's the y-axis right here. So we look at quantity. The higher the quantity of supply, the higher the price, or the higher sub is supplied because of the high price. And the higher the quantity for demand it means the lower the price. And right here in the center, the two cross, and that's where you have your current price. This is what we're looking to do. We're looking to artificially change the supply from this blue line to the green line. We're looking to shift it left by constricting the supply. If you constrict the supply, well, you see what happens. You see where it crosses here? Instead of it crossing here at about yeah, right here in the center of the graph, if it's from 0 to 100, it'd be like 50. You want to move it up here to 60, right? We want that price to raise where this crosses. However, you can't do this with all items. You have to find particular items where this demand right here is the the this particular line follows that course. Let's take it take a look at what's called elastic demand. Elastic demand is bad. What it means is if you constrict the supply, you see how little the price goes up? It goes up very very little. It goes up very little because Oh, let's say it's gum. I like one particular brand of gum. But if that one particular brand of gum decides to raise its price by a dollar per pack, I'm just going to go buy the other kind of gum. It's very ela The demand is very elastic, meaning it can stretch. If I want that one item, if the price goes up, I just go get a different item. Let's talk about on the opposite end. 
something with inelastic demand. You see the curve is much sharper there. When I decrease the supply, the price goes up immediately. You know why gas prices change every single day? It's because demand is very inelastic. People will go and they will buy gas no matter what. We will complain about it every single day, but we will buy gas no matter what. Now, there's so few people who will start carpooling because gas is too high, but for the most part, that demand does not change depending on how much supply there is. So our first task when we're looking to manipulate the markets is we want to find something that has inelastic demand. Why? Because when we constrict the supply, we will get the most return on our money. If we find an item that has no replacement, such as one of the materials for legendary, you have to get that material. You can't. Say, it doesn't say in the recipe, well, you can get 250 ore of calcum ore, but you know what? If it's too high in the marketplace, just go get some copper ore. It'll work just as well. No, you can't do that. It, the demand's inelastic. If you want a legendary, you have to have ore calcum ore. That demand is inelastic. The only time when the demand will go down is when somebody says, you know what? I give up. I'm not going to take the legendary because it's too expensive. So those are the kinds of items we're looking for. We're looking for items with inelastic demand. If it has elastic demand, then when you buy all the stuff up on the market and you repost it for a higher price, everybody's going to be like, eh, I don't want that, and they'll go buy something else instead. Good case in point is armor. If I get all the armor with plus power on it, because, you know, power is the best, right? It increases your damage. And I repost it for twice as much. Everybody's going to be like, eh, you know what? I could spend 10 gold on plus power armor, or I could switch my build over and spend one gold on, on condition build. Yeah, I'll do that instead. It's because there, there are options, there are other choices. So we have to find these particular items. There's the end of that show. I'd like to give you a couple of examples where supply and demand has taken part in changing the price. Great example, unidentified dye. At one point, there was a bug where unidentified dye started dropping way too often. Now, this graph goes from mid-September to, oh, beginning of December, so till now. Um, here, the first month or so, it's very, very steady decline. It's The market's finding its equilibrium at this point. Remember, the game only came out end of August, so it's still just kind of finding a general spot where it wants to sit. At this point, though, right here, I believe it was a November 2nd patch, all of a sudden, dyes were dropping like mad. They dropped off of everything. Like our graph showed, when supply increases, let's take a look at the cell listings, just to show you what happened. See that huge spike in cell listings? When, when, when you have a whole ton more product, the price is going to go down. Uh, because the value of any, any individual item uh, will decrease. Okay, So that's what happened there. And then at this day... <laughs> I read it says, whoa, whoa, something's going on here. And they fixed it. And immediately demand starts going up. Now, you notice it's going up a lot sharper than what it was going down previously before this. That's mostly because of the psychology of it. It's also because more people are level 80, looking for stuff to do. More people have more gold, they're looking for something to throw it away at uh, with unidentified, unidentified dyes, that sort of thing. But this shows you two stories. One, right there, where all of a sudden they started, they all of a sudden started dropping. It dropped incredibly fast, and then when they hotfixed it, boom, the price shoots right back up. Another time, and this was actually said in a blog post by John Smith, who is the economist, economist at Guild Wars. Um, I really envy him. He has the best job on earth. But one thing he noticed, and he said in this, this blog post on September 14th, is that there are certain items he says that are clearly out of sync in terms of supply and demand. It's not interesting or fun to have a market flooded with items that contain very little value, so we're making adjustments to the game every day. Hidden language here, they're reducing the supply. The way they decided to reduce the supply is if you throw 250 sticks of butter into the Mystic Forge, you get some other item. That's a lot of butter coming out of the market incredibly fast. Now, let's take a look at what happened to the market on that day. September 14th, it was two silver, or two copper each. September 16th, it was 13 copper each. Okay, huge spike right as he did it. And then it kind of, as he made the announcement, everybody's like, <gasps> I want butter! Went out and bought as much butter as they possibly could. The price went just sky high. And then all of a sudden, everybody realized, oh, I have some bags. I can cash in on this. Started selling it and creating, creating more supply. And then right there at the end, right before they cut it off, it went sky high again. 
and they reduce the quantity in the market substantially and it's now found in equilibrium and is generally rising now according to inflation. Um, let's take a look at number of sell listings. You see what happened right there? All of a sudden, everything that was on the market right here, now notice sell listings are at two copper. The reason why there weren't more is because it's at vendor price. That's just above vendor price. I believe vendor price is one copper. Most people were just throwing them away at that point because they were so cheap, there was no point in holding on to them. And they dropped incredibly. And as soon as they stopped this Mystic Forge concept, uh, throwing them into Mystic Forge to get another item, the, the volume went right back up. So we know that the amount of supply and the amount of demand affects its real price. And we know that when there are alternate items, trying to manipulate that item is a lot less successful. So we have to make sure that we're looking for something with elastic demand, with inelastic demand. Okay. I will see you on the next video in this series, which will go over some other things you want to uh, want to look at before looking to manipulate an item.